James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, here we have uh, an Atkins frozen dinner. Okay, this is how it looks in the box. All right, nine ounces. Let's try to get a close-up of this. Nine ounces, roast turkey tenders with herb pan gravy. Okay, uh, of course, it looks like a nice portion on the box. Nine ounces, though. All right, it's supposed to be a, an Atkins portion, which is mostly, predominantly, uh, should be protein, low carb, no sugar. All right, this has 23 grams of protein, no sugar added, 360 calories, uh, 6 grams of net carbs. All right. There you go. And uh, of course, five bucks for this one dinner. All right. Now the problem I have is, aside from the price, because usually an Atkins meal, when Atkins was alive, you recommend a large portion of protein. This is 23 grams. Is the sodium? Sodium is like 800 and 830 grams. I mean, uh, not grams. I'm sorry. Hold on. Milligrams, 830 milligrams of sodium. Now, why couldn't, being that Atkins, Dr. Robert C. Atkins, when he was alive, he used to recommend a salt substitute called New Salt, which is pure. It's hard to, it's Sorry about this. It's a little difficult to zero in. All right, he recommended a product called New Salt, which is pure potassium, comes in a small blue bottle. Why couldn't he put the New Salt in here instead of the 830 milligrams of sodium chloride, of salt? Now, what if... Uh, the overweight person is uh, hi has hypertension. Okay, that's not good. Seems like a lot to me. My uh, my mother tested it out, and she said it was terribly salty. She could hardly uh, taste the uh, turkey. Actually, all she tasted was salt. So. That's a lot of sodium chloride for uh, a nine ounce supposedly healthy dinner with the Atkins name on it. All right. For five dollars for nine ounces, 23, 23 grams of protein, but you know, I mean, it's a lot of sodium. Too much. Plus the price is real high. What's going on, Veronica Atkins? She sold out to uh, the, the greed of uh, the American uh, corporate food industry. And speaking of the devil here, this is the portion you get. Doesn't look like a hearty, high-protein Dr. Robert C. Atkins dinner, does it? Just several little slivers, little medallions of supposed turkey breast. Okay, with some string beans, green beans rather. 
and a, and a few specks of uh, red pepper. That's the nine ounces of this high protein Atkins dinner, which is supposed to have a pretty large portion of protein. If you're uh, you're dealing with um, the teachings of the late great Dr. Robert C. Atkins, so it looks like his wife sold out to uh, to to the corporate uh, food industry of the United States. Always looking for the bottom line. So I don't know. Not a good rating. So I induct these Atkins dinners into this week's Chiseler's Hall of Shame. Now, just for the hell of it, let's see um, who's making the Atkins dinner. Let's see if we got a name here. Well, Atkins.com. Okay. I just want to see if anybody else is making it for Atkins. They're on Facebook and Twitter. It just says Atkins. Atkins.com. There's the number. But anyway, nevertheless, nevertheless, for an overpriced meal that is really not a meal, they should have at least replaced the 830 milligrams of sodium with new salt, which is potassium. And now they also have blends, you know, with other minerals, potassium, calcium, magnesium. All right, not 830 milligrams of sodium, ridiculous. Especially if you uh, obese people that are hypertensive. All right, so that's it. There's your wonderful, hearty, so-called hearty, haha, I'm being sarcastic, Atkins dinner. Bye-bye. Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, August the 2nd. That's right, August the 2nd, mm -hmm. 2014. Deep into summer. Deep into summer. They now. call this the dog days of summer. <coughs> we don't have that dog barking anymore because she's not here. She left town. It was a cute little pit bull. But it was maybe because it's young, it, it barks at it barked at everything, or maybe because it wasn't trained properly, or maybe or maybe it's bored and and the and the and, and the family didn't give it enough attention. They say dogs look at their human owners as as a part of the pack. They they consider you the alpha of the pack, and yeah, and, and they literally. <clears throat> That's why you have to make sure that they understand. Well, they become <laughs> Who's the boss. Well, that's why they become literally members of the family. <coughs> yeah, but they have to understand their place. Yes. You know I mean? Early, early on. Early on. Yeah. Greetings, everyone. Of course, I told you what it was. So August the second. I wonder. Yesterday was my birthday. Uh, now. I mean, man. Oh, we gotta pay uh, royalty if I sing that. Several bars. Happy birthday to you? Yeah. Somebody pa somebody copyrighted happy birthday to you? Of course, the you. woman who wrote it. Oh my God. You see how greedy people have gotten in the United States? Happy birthday is copyrighted? Yes. And and look at the words, the, the lyrics. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. Happy uh, birthday, dear. Dear, whoever, happy birthday whatever. to you. Oh, that took, that took a lot of skill to write that song. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. Real deep thinker there. Give me a break. That's like me calling um, me calling my hot dog uh, uh, joint. Um, if I had one, uh, we sell hot dogs. It's almost that frivolous. 
or or the hot dog place. Speaking of hot dogs, yeah, be Cali hands. What? I Remember thought they were out of business. Down? I yeah. thought they went belly up. They are now a truck. A food truck. They were reduced to a truck. <laughs> they used to be it used to be a big establishment with more than one location. Yeah, very very nice inside too. They specialize in giant hot dogs here in the the uh, north northeastern New Jersey area and they went belly up and now they're reduced to a mere truck. I see their ad in the paper. Oh my God! How about that? I don't know where they station themselves, but you, you know, know what? Don't. We're not going to scoff at a, at a hot dog truck. They can they can surprisingly make more money than people think. Oh yeah. The most simplest little gig, little business, small business uh, 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 concept can make quite a bit of money because you don't have the overhead of of a restaurant or whatever. One blew up the other day because the propane tank was leaking. Uh -oh. A woman and a child, I think, were killed. You mean a, a, a food truck? Food truck. It's a shame. Well, anyway, uh, welcome to um, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, and uh, we are coming to you from the uh, Newsletter Censored Research Center in northeastern New Jersey. And I will now get the formalities out of the way. I will now pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977 with my authentic bosun's whistle. Yes, I say this every week. Uh, but how many people do you know start a show blowing a real bosun's whistle? typing aboard their, their mentor and their co-host. I don't see David Letterman uh, or, or Paul, I'm sorry, I don't see Come Paul on. Schaefer blowing a bosun's whistle for Letterman. Probably give him the finger if he asked him to do Is that. Is he still there? Yeah! Wow. Got a great band though. Paul Schaefer's band, I love it. Welcome aboard our uh, uncensored, hard-hitting truth, Starship Censored, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Achy. Achy. Could be because we're having a, a rainy weekend here in northern New Jersey, and the barometric pressure is up, as they say. Maybe and it that's ain't the an achy, breaky heart. Either. Yeah. Not to be confused with, her, with his daughter. Ooh. Which has a neurological problem with her tongue. It does it. I wouldn't mind if it stuck out like Gene Simmons of Kiss, but it goes sideways, you know. Speaking of tongues, my tongue is almost uh, back to a, a normal. Good. I, uh, you know, but I have. Um, the only thing I have to say is that, um, honestly, of course, a lot of things are happening. Mostly concerning Gaza and, uh, and um, Mario Petrus, uh, my good friend, uh, one of the premier personal trainers in, uh, in New Jersey and the trainer of the, uh, the cast of uh, the Housewives of New Jersey. He posted wow. some very graphic photos of um, Palestinians that were blown apart in Gaza and he posted them on the uh, uncensored new, um, hard hitting truth page and I glanced at him real quick because it just I couldn't take gazing at them. However, but uh, we have to understand the propagandistic situation there with Gaza, with Hamas. Hamas puts itself, let's say it puts its rockets in a place, yeah, like a hospital, or a place where they don't think that uh, the Israelis are going to target them. I mean, like what Saddam Hussein did in Iraq. They use humans as shields. You know? Well, so you gotta watch that stuff. Of course there's gonna be a lot of collateral damage. Well, don't they use uh, kind of situation. women or women with children as suicide bombers? The jihadists, that's what they do! 
I but, mean, that's what's but, pathetic but, about the situation. But, 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 but seeing it, especially children, is heartbreaking. Exactly. But, hey, all war is heartbreaking. I don't care who's right. doing it. And what you're trying to say in a roundabout way is that collateral damage will happen. Of course. I'm sure it happened in World War II when the Allies bombed Berlin. It happens in every war. Bombed Berlin, right? Yes. It happens in any war. I mean, that's why well, war is so devastating. I'm sorry. I know, uh, see, Dr. Bill, William J. Eisman, Ph.D., and uh, our voiceover artist, William H. Morrow, are they they side they're siding with Israel and I'm sorry I'm siding no I'm not siding, I'm siding with, with the other side the, uh, I just said that anybody who conducts war is guilty yeah there should be no such thing as war and there should be no US tax money in the billions going to foreign countries <clears throat> we, and, and, we are the major uh, weapon supplier to all yeah. of those countries. and the rich and corporations okay. that certainly don't need bailouts that's what we do. You know, um, we see. sell these weapons to these countries that foment these countries into doing things like that. They would, hey, if we didn't have guns in America, maybe they'd have to throw stones to kill somebody or use a baseball bat. No, what you're saying is if there's a will, there's a way. And especially if they get the god dang stuff for nothing. You know well, what I mean? the, the U.S. Congress recently... Um, They're on vacation! Not only that, they blocked a bill, well, before they left, they blocked a, a law or a bill that was um, attempted to be passed that would uh, sort of penalize uh, corporations that outsource American jobs with taxes. And they, uh, you know, they... Uh, they want a hands-off policy with corporations that outsource to avoid paying United States income taxes and and seeking cheap labor overseas. So the uh, conveniently, before they ran out on vacation, the Republican Congress blocked that. Doesn't surprise me. Dr. Richard Wolf. And they're supposed to be so patriotic, the Republicans. Dr. Richard Patriotic to who? Not the government. They hate the government. Well, they're certainly using the flag all the time. Oh, they do, don't what, they? Waving this, oh glory. They use religion too, don't they? They use but the they Bible. But they don't know what the hell they're talking but about. But they don't know what's in the Bible. Correct. But Dr. Richard Wolf today right. was speaking about that very subject. And he said what I said. Well, if you have a company that threatens, hey, if you're going to tax me, I'm go I'm, I'm moving out. Of, uh, out of go. Town. Don't let the door hit you in the ass. Exactly what he said. And the workers will take over the production and you ain't selling your crap back here in the United States. Take away their charter. Well, you don't have to if they're going to move. Don't let the door hit them in the ass. Goodbye. Well, Walgreens wants to move. Uh, it's uh mailbox to Switzerland. There you go. That's to avoid taxes. And All they do is. they do these things because they can. They can. Because they they buy their lover. They they bought their lovers. For sixty or seventy years or whatever it was. In Washington. After, yeah. During the thirties and after World War Two. We didn't allow them to do that. And we taxed the shit out of them. Because you know why? Because our tax system is set up that the more money you make, the more taxes you pay. That's how it was originally set up. Well, that's how it is in effect right now. But we don't do that. We don't honor that. Because there isn't no corporation paying 35%. And there ain't no rich person that's paying 39.6%. None. No. Heaven forbid we should go back to the uh, the pre-Reagan tax rate on the rich, you know, like, uh, I mean, going back to Eisenhower and Truman. 70 percent, yeah. Poor, the poor darlings, the uh, uh, poor babies are crying now. Yeah, and they're threatening to move. Move, go. Bye. They should sing that song, na, 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 hey, hey goodbye. You know, I mean, go. 
Okay. We'll that's take all. over the production of your products or whatever isn't you're making what, here. Isn't that what so. Chris Christie said? If he doesn't do what he does, he's afraid to yeah, leave New Jersey. Leave. Go! Oh, then he wouldn't get paid off from the from the rich ah, in New, New Jersey. Maybe that's what he's worried about. Yeah, there goes his meal ticket. There, there goes his. Uh, Speaking of meal, his unlimited grocery bill. <laughs> I mean, his unlimited grocery supply. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I I've decided that the media and the everyday Joe Six Pack American uh, 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 Palooka, whatever you want to call him, Joe Palooka. Joe Palooka. Spent, is spending way too much time discussing, debating, and of course the media is giving way too much face time to Sarah Palin and Michelle Bachman, Bubblehead Bachman, especially Sarah Palin, who has been uh, everything that comes out of her mouth. She's uh, on the internet and in the media, and um, we have two lovely uh, complimentary photos, uh, as you just saw, one of them on our show uh, of Sarah Palin. They're not complimentary and they sh they definitely should not be but there's way too much attention being put on on this total imbecile. The, uh, I mean uh, this is Tea Party attention with the Ted Cruz stuff. Ted Cruz, the big leader of the house. Oh, the hey, uh, the Tin Man from the Wizard of he, Oz. He looked without he went, the tin. He looks just like him. He went over to the house the other day. Yeah to tell them what to do, you see. He what wants to be he? Speaker of the House. Hey, let him become Speaker of the House. He's in the Senate. Keep your goddamn nose in the Senate. Oh, well, he's got a long Pinocchio nose. A no, he leaves to like 13 or whatever them stupid uh, die-hard tea partiers are in the House. And the toucan from Fruit Loops, uh, 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 Eddie Cantor. He's gone. Cantor resigned, right? No, not he Eddie got Cantor. kicked out. Uh, not Eddie Cantor. He lost his Cantor. primary battle. So he's gonna he's gone. Maybe he can get a part time job as a can opener. What's the guy in there? A relief Riesel or something? It's uh, another he's now the another uh, Republican? Second Of course. Who the hell are you gonna get? Put a Democrat in charge? When you own the house? Come on. Well, I, I really would love to see that. That tur ugly turtle face uh, McConnell uh, lose. According to the I'm crap, I'm so sick I, of his face. According to the crap I get from the Daily Kos and etc., it seems like McConnell's in trouble. At least that's what. And, I'm, and that's a that says a lot for those numbskulls in Kentucky. Those well, rednecks the in Kentucky. In, trouble in Kentucky, you know, like I say, they took the exchange and they're doing well with. Uh, I think they got something like four hundred and some thousand people signed up for Obamacare. I hear a lot of people that are the not necessarily did. Democrats are enjoying the fruits of Obamacare. I hear it's going over quite well. It's something like over eight million Of course people. it's going over That's quite well. Up. You got you got health coverage, a lot more health coverage than you had before. It's a thousand times better than just having Medicaid. Well, the Republicans are suing Mr. Obama over Obamacare. Wonderful. Okay. My sister owes like uh, is going to end up owing like I don't know ten or twenty percent of her medical bill for her mm -hmm. surgery, and, she, and she's got uh, supposed to have uh, top-notch uh, health insurance. And uh, other people tell me with Obamacare, they don't pay anything. They have a zero deductible. So, you know, hey, no wonder it's people love it. Well, what we really should have had from day one is the the universal health care uh, uh, single-payer system. <laughs> we should really have technically... God forbid we should become socialists. We should really have what Scandinavian countries have, which is complete full education and health care as a right, not a privilege. Free and make the rich pay for it. Now, isn't that a fair system? Uh, those who make more money pay more. Right. It's as simple as that. It's not a punishment. And the people should demand that the independent candidates get invited to televised debates. That's fair, too. How are all of these states going to hear independent candidates? 
to allow them to go to the debates. Yeah. Yeah. How are they going to get to know them? But you know what? Statistically, it's really sad, this figure. 90, 94% of the time, the politician that spends the most money ends up Wait, winning. That's correct. Ninety-four percent of the time, right. got to get the money out of politics. That's not fair at all. Of course not. It hasn't been fair since the railroads. It hasn't been fair, uh, you know, at all. This right-wing gentleman uh, stated on the uh, on our group at Facebook that uh, didn't your mommy and daddy ever teach you that life was not fair? I would stop all welfare. But he said. I would stop all social services. He said. Well, I got, got news for that gentleman. We established civilization to make life fair. You see, we don't live in the wild anymore. No. Like he wants. No. Well, he has a, he grew up on, he owns a, f a farm. So he makes his own food. Well, good for him. But, but, but that's... Does he allow the poor to come, does he, when he harvests, does he let his, his, a part of his harvest around his acreage to allow the poor to come in and eat? Like the Bible? Does he do that like, like the Bible says? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I don't think so, no. Okay. No, it's a, you know, the typical, uh, uh, it's a typical arrogant American right-wing attitude. I have mine. I have mine. I have mine. Mm, yeah. And I don't care what you have or what you don't have. That's correct. I got mine, you know. And I'm going to make sure that I keep mine with a gated community. Yeah. What's well, the time uh, a friend of mine uh, who's a competitive uh, female bodybuilder said that Rosie Perez, actress Rosie Perez, Rosie was, Perez. was one of the judges. And, and some of the, the Latin bodybuilders, like herself, approached Rosie Perez and, and you know, said, look, uh, we'd like to break into the business. And Rosie Perez... A couple of them handed their card, and she ripped them up and threw it in her face, and says, "I'm not helping anybody." Uh huh. Do it on your own. To her own fellow Latinas. And yet she advertises fundraising for WBAI in New York, which is a listener-sponsored yeah. radio station. Yeah. Well, like we said before, the American way. Well, it's not just the American way of thinking. Even in third world countries, the rich, like sometimes I chat with people that have careers and businesses in other countries, third world, and they have this attitude where if you bring up the poor in their country, they change the subject quickly. They don't really care about their poor either. Or, or, if, or if their people, the average folk in the Philippines are, are, are receiving 50 cents to a dollar an hour uh, for a good job, or if Chinese people are getting 32 cents an hour at Foxconn, they don't have a lot of compassion and empathy. They have theirs, and that's all they care about. Well, just look back in history. You see anybody we had compassion in? It's only like one person here, there, or whatever. There's a guy in India. I saw his uh, great man Facebook yeah. video. He goes out and feeds the poor. Yes. And in, in, and in India, that's an accomplishment because mm. they, they did studies, they did uh, tests in, in Indian cities, and the people just don't stop and help you. No. They don't care. No. It's almost like, you know, like Indians are like uh, part of an ant colony, and, and some are going to be sacrificed. To make the bridge over the water. Yes. For the other ones to walk over their back. There are so many people there, and uh, there's only so much resources, and I can guarantee <coughs> the resources are not equally shared. Not when you have politicians like that in charge. Or not when you have uh, CEOs like Mr. Nestle Boy there, you know, where the water is his. He owns it all. Yeah. Isn't yeah. it something that Afghanistan is the world's largest su supplier of opium? Uh, friend, they went sky high since the war. You mean the sale of opium? Yeah. Yeah. You and think, not only you is think they're the, getting help? I would say so. 
And not only is Afghanistan rich in that material, they are rich in gems. Minerals. Well, Northern India, there's a, there's a city or, or a, a region that is world famous for gems. All the buyers go there internationally. There you yeah. But you see, if a country has a resource, <laughs> let's say bananas or coffee or something like that, you have to have some way to come in, or oil, you got to have some other person or capitalist or something that comes in and he goes to work on this resource and blah 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 and then when you find out in the end they're stealing you blind the like the De Beers mining company in South Africa the same thing. gold and diamonds so it's, it's still South Africa South Africa can say hey hey De Beers Screw you! We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna impose a uh, a, a huge tariff or yeah, well whatever. Yeah, whatever. What about sharing the wealth, profit sharing? Well, maybe they are, and only the politicians in Johannesburg are getting are more. pocketing it all, yeah. and the poor people, the Zulu nation, That's right. the people of South Africa are are, are not getting diddly dick. The people don't uh, enjoy the benefits. Mm -hmm. thereof, yes. We're dealing with the wickedness of human nature which has not really changed. So, uh, this but, is me. But which capitalism plays upon. Yes. You know, the like Adam Smith said. The devil's economics. If you do for yourself, you'll help the rest of the public. No, it don't work that way. It doesn't work that way! Remember people, if you teach a man to fish instead of give him a fish, the waters can become contaminated and the shorelines can be sold off privately. You ever, think, you ever tell that to a right winger who gives you that proverb? I think we're going to read something about... Um, Seafood? No, something about tiny porpoises which are like there's only like a hundred left or something. I don't know, I just quickly glanced well, at it. I don't know what beach it was, but I watched a video of some very kind people at a beach uh, bodily uh, pick up and um, take um, porpoises or dolphins that were stranding themselves on the beach and, mm -hmm. and bringing them out to, uh, to the waters, deeper waters, so they can swim away and the porpoises did swim away. I saw. They, why they why they did that? I have no idea why they beached themselves. But I saw a video the other day of a of a of a shark flailing around on the beach, choking on a seal. <laughs> That's what he gets for trying to chase the seal into shallow waters. Maybe the seal was you know just too big for him. So the he seal was, was in his mouth. It. Yeah, he was choking to death on it. The seal probably probably bleed to death anyway. How the hell? Do the big snakes avoid that situation when they got something huge that they are swallowing? Their jaw hinge detaches. Eesh. You mean pythons and anacondas? Yeah. Hey, we're supposed to have an anaconda in one of our lakes here. Constricting some idiot uh, 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 dumped his anaconda in a uh, probably New Jersey lake. Mm -hmm. They're very good swimmers. Mm -hmm. That that shouldn't be good news for the residents. Yeah. Oh, either it was sighted or. Oh uh, well, it hasn't been caught and it hasn't been you know, but they say it's there. I don't know. Was it an is. anaconda or or a Burmese python or? They say an anaconda. Yeah, you you know it's you could buy just about any damn thing on online. That, that's what that's what's scary about it. Well, you ain't gonna buy a big anaconda. No, somebody probably got ready it. Ready for the lake. Some probably got it as a baby. Whew. Yeah. And you know, with enough TLC, it grew, grew up to be a, a snake that was too big yeah, now to be a pet. Now it don't want to eat chickens. It wants to eat your dog. You know? And cats and raccoons yeah. and Hey, speaking of cats and raccoons. Woodchucks and beavers, what? Coyotes are going wild, man. Not girls gone wild. No. College co-ed's gone wild. Coyotes, they're in Saddlebrook, right over here at the Saddlebrook Park. I'm, this is California, I think, because of all the drought and the fires and everything. They're coming in. They're coming in. A guy went after them with a shovel the other day. They didn't give a shit. 
probably starving. A jerk coming out there with a shovel. No, they're, 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 they will attack your pooch. What? Oh, yeah. Because they, uh, well, they don't, somebody told me they don't hunt in packs. Well, these were in packs. Guess what? They learned to hunt in packs now. Uh -huh, whatever. They will overtake what they can. That's all I'm going to say. And if, ha if you happen to leave your kid in the backyard in oh, a... Boy in a stroller, I mean in a in a playpen, don't do it if you happen to live in such an area. You know, the drought is is bad. The media does not discuss the terrible drought in America too much. They haven't said anything, but it's not getting better. No, and now in those in those in those states, if you want to drill a well going to cost you a hundred thousand dollars because you got to drill down baby down I think Governor Jerry Brown told the California farmers that they're they're in a state of yes. it's like a state of emergency no more water right? for you he said there's they're, they're in trouble you, yeah. you know <laughs> not just California Texas is in a drought Nevada Arizona they better get used the only thing they're the, they'll be able to grow in uh, the dates in, uh, in, the, in the Mojave Desert. They got California dates. should a long time ago dates have and done fix. what Australia does with desalinization of the ocean water. Desalinization. Yeah, so it's it's potable. Drink so it. they can. Um, they're going to have to. Yeah. They better watch it's out. A they late to start. They know? better watch out for the Pacific Ocean water. You know what I'm getting at. I'll give you one guess. I got news for you. I'll give you one guess. If it's... The radiation is here. Okay. Well, desalinization... Oh, I'm saying. You know, taking that H2O hole, Ooh. like they, they said on the honeymooners, like Ralphie boy said, let's let's shorten it to uh, hole instead of H2O. Well, mm -hmm. they, didn't, they didn't really they didn't know it was water. That was the, uh, the cure for baldness. Remember that formula they bought? from the sky is crooked. <laughs> anyway, anyway, oh the radiation God. is still in the hole, in the H2O. Whoa. Correct? Mercy, mercy me, whoa. I thought you were going to sing hi-ho, hi-ho. Things ho. ain't what they used to be, ah uh -huh. Stick to the country, Radiation West. underground. Stick to the Fish full of mercury. Or like, uh, what the, hell the, late, the, late, the late Harold Camping used to say mercury. Mercury. Like my grandfather, they couldn't say mercury. They said mercury. Mercury. Well, my uncle's Mercury. Uh, mer mercury. 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 I used to work in a. I used to work in a factory. In a factory, when I was a kid. I was painting felt tipped hats with mercury. Yeah, and a lot of people uh, worked around asbestos back then too. Well, now there's a lot of that methylmethylioma and uh, lung cancer. But anyway, the radiation has already reached. The West Coast, and I, and they saw some freakish-looking sea creature. I don't know what the hell it was. It was a they 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 treated it like a jellyfish that has never been seen before, washing up on California uh, beaches. There's a lot of things to come in the end times, people. A lot of things to come, but um, I I didn't have anything formal formally written down to what? talk about. So we just we just bantered off the top of our heads um, from memory of uh, the things that happened uh, this week, and of course, you know, Republicans are always in the spotlight because they're destroying this country mm -hmm. and the Earth, the planet, and the corporations uh, are no angels at all. You know, they send the lobbyists and uh, they pay off the. Uh, the, the big shots. They bribe them. They bribe them. Thank they, you. They pay bribes. It's a bribe. That's right. It's not a contribution. Well, yeah, it's a contribution to their campaign, but it's still a bribe. That's right. Anyway, let us sink our teeth deep into these readings. I'm supposed to be playing the drum uh, later at the Patterson Historic Museum with the Renaissance Man Can Create. Oh boy. They're having a, there's a big art show there and a jazz band. Hey, hey, hey. But I will be there just for a couple hours. Here's that story I was talking about. An environmental panel says fewer than 100 yeah. of Mexico's 
vaquita marina porpoises are left and that they are in imminent danger of extinction. It's a small breed, right? A report released on Friday says studies using underwater listening devices have found only about half the number of porpoises that were counted in 2012. The tiny porpoise lives only in the upper portion of the Sea of Cortez. Really? This is interesting. That's where the Humboldt uh, squid, the, uh, they're second to the giant squid. That's where they live, the Sea of Cortez. It is threatened by gillnet fishing and China's appetite for swim bladder of another endangered fish hunted in the same area. Chinese, uh, you mean Chinese commercial boats travel that far to fish? Unless they buy it. Unless they're the buyer. So, 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 uh, commerce, business, is, of course, is causing this porpoise to be highly endangered. Just like all endangered uh, species throughout the world. Yes, we're overfishing. Greed. The ocean. Over harvesting, poaching for ivory tusks. And don't uh, forget when uh, they for fish. skins, for this, for that. Oh, I just was looking in Time magazine today and they were just talking about they were showing elephants and rhinos dead and then and what they do with them afterwards with cutting the tusks and all they this. They leave crap. the carcass right there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The sons I'm, of sure, I'm sure the vultures just love the poachers. The bladder of the Toto Aba fish. Oh, Dancing Queen? Does it sing Dancing Queen? Is used... Toto Abba, Abba. Is used in soups. Shame. And the vaquitas often are caught in Totooba nets. You can always connect life on this planet that's in danger to business. Always. I've heard that aluminum pots are toxic for cooking. Yeah, they, they leach aluminum into the food. If a pot has no markings, how can I tell whether it's aluminum or stainless steel? Oh gosh, you can't tell, man. Stainless steel, number one, is heavier, thicker, and as it's not as uh, it's it's a deeper silver. It's not uh, aluminum is a like a lighter colored silver. First, let's put this myth to rest. Aluminum pots and pans are perfectly safe. Uh, who's this saying this? This is Marilyn. Ask Marilyn. Yeah, is Marilyn a right winger, corporatist? I'm not sure what Marilyn is saying here, but if I read into it, all right, go ahead. If she's saying the aluminum is on the outside, fine, I agree with her. Yeah. If the aluminum is on the inside, then damn well it does. It's toxic. Yes, a lot of chefs' pans, a lot of good chefs' pans, made of surgical stainless steel, have an aluminum-clad bottom for even heat distribution. That's correct. Because and plus it gets hot fast. Stainless steel does not conduct heat as right. evenly. Yeah. So the bottom is aluminum and the rest of it is stainless steel. About half of all cookware is aluminum. Usually coated with a non-stick surface. See? That's not the aluminum inside that she's talking about. She's talking about it's a non Teflon or one of them non-stick you know, surfaces on the inside. Or treated for some other purpose. And because stainless steel conducts, conducts heat so unevenly, most stainless cookware has an aluminum or a copper bottom. Aluminum is the most abundant metal on the planet. More it's than copper? It's in water. More than copper, really? It's in food. It's in common medicines. Well, trace trace amounts. Trace. You know what medicines you're talking about? Vaccines. 
can't be anything positive in a vaccine. We ingest a tiny amount of aluminum daily. If aluminum pots are untreated, they may react to cooking highly acidic foods like tomatoes and sauerkraut, causing corrosion. Lovely. And allowing a minute amount of aluminum to be released. But less than even an aspirin may contain. What the hell is really? aspirin containing aluminum? Why would an aspirin contain aluminum? Huh? You don't. That's not a binder of, of a tablet, is it? I have no idea. I don't know why it's in there. Aluminum toxicity requires ingesting or inhaling large amounts. That said, there's no simple way to tell aluminum from stainless steel unless you have identical pots to compare. Aluminum sounds duller when tapped with a spoon, and it scratches more easily. Yes. With only an unknown pot, you could see if a magnet sticks to its surface. If it does, even weekly, the pot is stainless steel. But if it doesn't, you still don't know. The pot is either aluminum or it's not magnetized. Mm -hmm. Well, I notice that certain cookware, certain specific cookware, is seems to traditionally always be solid aluminum, like those uh, Spanish paella um, pots, they cook yes, rice and paella, you know, there's a company, <coughs> a Spanish company, and uh, I guess they sell them in, in ethnic markets, and they're all aluminum, and I... Ah, on the inside! The whole damn thing. Oh my god. You know, and... Uh, Aluminum is 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 involved in Alzheimer's from the antiperspirants, etc. My and if she's wrong about you, oh, you have to inhale a lot, or you got to take a lot. No, it could be cumulative. Well, let me give you a true testimonial. My grandmother made her homemade spaghetti sauce in a humongous solid aluminum pot and my grandfather eventually came down with Alzheimer's disease. Could have not been my, connection. Not my grandmother, my grandfather. Of course he became diabetic too. They, it runs in the family but it also runs in the American diet. More more so than the family. Yeah, I would say. The doctors, the medical doctor says, oh it's hereditary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, everything's hereditary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're, I told my grandmother you were uh, your bad LDL, your LDL cholesterol and triglycerides are high because it runs in the family. Uh, yeah, keep eating your sugar. No, keep on taking the medication I prescribed for you. Oh, that too, yeah. Yeah. Although it's only good for two years. After that, it's no good anymore. Because if she, if she cures herself by natural means, oh. then she won't have to go to the doctor to get the prescriptions refilled and the drug companies won't make as oh, much big profit. pharma wouldn't like that. Uh. No, sir. Or big agro, or 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 big. Uh, what do you call the U.S. food industry? Uh, USDA. U.S. The, well, D -A. They, oh, that's another thing. Never trust the USDA certified organic logo. Yeah, because they want to change it. They want to be able to have their junk food called organic. Is, isn't that what scumbag uh, CEO Mackey of Whole Foods is dealing with from China? USDA organic mm -hmm. foods grown in China and trying to pass them off as health foods at Whole Foods? Once upon a time all foods were organic and gee whiz they didn't cost extra you know? Right. Now they cost extra. Hmm. A little change of pace see? Eh? My partner, whom I have been living with for two years, is a loving, wonderful man. We live in the country, about an hour outside of our home city. 
a few weeks ago, he asked if I would mind if he spent the night at a friend's place in the city. After a night of board games and drinks. I don't want to be a controlling wife. So I reluctantly told him it wasn't a big issue. Well, this week we opened that conversation again. And it is a big issue with me. I was raised with traditional values. And my partner and I attend church Sunday mornings. Not only does this sleepover seem unusual for a grown man, but he would be missing church. Sleepover? I applaud him for making the responsible decision not to drive after drinking. But living out in the country was our choice. A part of that choice means sometimes accepting that an all-nighter with the pals in the big city may not be appropriate anymore. Isn't that the life of a single man? That's, that's not seriously involved? I mean, how often does he do this again? Uh, she, she didn't say. Mm -hmm. The men in my family never did things like this. And I'm confused because I wouldn't do it either. Oh, his friends might lead him to stray. Well, maybe he's going to the city to stray. Yeah. You know, maybe he's going to frequent a glory hole or whatever, you know? Hey, you, it can't be liquor because it's cheaper to, to, to drink in the, in the suburbs where he lives yeah. than it is to go to the big city. It's a lot cheaper. I mean, why don't why don't his friends go to the liquor store and get together and watch sports or have a poker game or something? Or whatever. Maybe there are no friends involved. Uh, maybe he's on a rendezvous. He's on his own, baby. Maybe there is no boys' night out. Uh -huh. Maybe it's his night out to sneak around. Uh -huh. Maybe there's, an, there's another woman. Ah! Uh! It's a possibility, too. And here's the answer from Amy Dickinson. There is no one way to have a happy partnership. Some couples find balance in taking occasional fishing trips or theater weekends away from each other. But I will say this. Anecdotally speaking, the happiest the strongest couples I've studied seem to want to sleep with their partners by their side. Yeah. And would stay sober and drive through a blizzard to get home after a night playing board games. Question mark. Question mark. Is board, it board games, board or, games. Or, or broad games? Or it could be the the games at home were boring. Maybe he's playing that game called Hide the Salami. They don't seem to need escape to have slumber parties with other adults. Your job is not to control your partner. Reject the idea that you are letting him do something you don't want him to do, say to him, Honey, I'm not in charge of you. I find this plan a little strange and baffling. But you should do what you want to do. You might also choose to spend the night in the city with friends. There you go. What's good, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. There you go. Don't fight with him. Do the same thing he's doing and see how he reacts. Most guys are like hypocrites. Not most guys, I'm sorry. Some guys are hypocrites. You know, they, it's okay for them to flirt, but heaven forbid, like their girl, girlfriend or wife is chatting with another man. But, but they can do it. You know what I mean? Double standards. Huh? 
I noticed that despite your traditional upbringing, you are not married to your partner. Oh, is he cohabitating with her? Two years. Yeah, but two years? Um, well, he, I would say he's uh, made a commitment if he's living with her. Sometimes. Is she, she the main squeeze? I guess so, until he started messing around well, in the big city. It's al it's almost like being married, you know? He's, she's a steady girlfriend, he, he's living with her. Sharing in the domestic responsibilities, I guess. This could be a crossroads for both of you. If you are truly miserable with the prospect and the reality of this, then you might not be with the right person. Yeah, something's missing. Something's missing there, buddy boy. I have been dating Joe for two years. Right. We have had our ups and downs. Apparently not enough ups and downs, get it? <laughs> He's got to go elsewhere? No, this is another one now. Oh, I'm sorry. My Nadia! I'm sorry. All right, well, uh, the, the joke still stands. And I moved out once. But now we are trying to make things work. Okay. I cannot stand his mother. She has, she has uh, early potential mother-in-law problems already. Or the way he was raised. Was he like, is he like a mama's boy? The entire family does not talk to me. How, what kind of a girl is she? The whole family? They don't care about what's going on in my life. Joe is irresponsible. Okay, you gotta listen to both stories when it comes to couples. He's rude. Okay. And right. selfish. All right. Our fights mainly consist of his lack of ability to help care for the house that we rent. Yeah. I try really hard to keep our place nice, wash and fold his clothes, uh, he's and an, make his lunch. He's an Oscar Madison. Well, if he's getting all this stuff done for him anyway, why should he change? As long as she right? runs after him and picks up after him and does all these things, why change? I was raised to work hard. To be respectful. Oh, okay. All right. That's, that's cool. A caring individual and to expect respect when it's deserved. Yeah, she, had a, she grew up in a nice family. I work ten times more than he does and make half the money. Is he paying most of the bills? And still come home to take care of a 23-year-old ungrateful and obnoxious jerk. Oh, that's him. Oh, he's 23. He's a young guy. Uh, you know, young females are always belly aching. I know people come from different backgrounds and try to respect this, but I also do not want to be a doormat for the rest of my life. Should I start packing? Do whatever you want. <laughs> Here's Amy's answer. Very short and sweet. He needs more sex? In the time it took you to write this letter, <laughs> you could have already packed your bags. <laughs> In other words, in other words, it's not a problem worthy of addressing. Get out! But it, it's only one opinion. It's only one side. You have to, you, 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 you know, one person can say, oh, what a rotten, dirty, rotten scoundrel, bye, 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 and complain and complain and complain. But meanwhile, maybe the person who's complaining is a horse's ass. Actually, you know, she never even got into a money situation. You know what? If she's working, if she's working ten times harder than uh, him and earning half the money. Maybe he's paying. Maybe he's making makes a, uh, more money than her and pays most of the bills. Maybe. You know, and he feels he could throw his clothes she on the floor. He did say you know, the I mean, place we rent. 
So that gives mm -hmm. you an idea that maybe there is some kind of sharing going on. Yeah, or maybe, you know, if it's his apartment, originally he could say, eh, I pay most of the bills, it's, it's my apartment anyway, I, I, I do what I want, if you wanted to do that. I mean, I could never live with a slob because I'm, I'm a, a neat person myself and, I, and, and I, I like to disinfect and clean things. But, you know, you got to really hear both sides. Maybe this, this girl is nitpicky, maybe she's a chronic complainer, you know, you never know. Maybe she's uh, demanding. Well, maybe yeah, she's, 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 she's telling the truth. Maybe he's a jerk. Yeah, that's what I say. She did name... I don't know. She did name a, a lot of bad traits. I will say that. Well, it's really... Uh, pet, to bring material things and money into the relationship is very petty. But she didn't do that. But she didn't do that. She just... But she was very general. She was talking right. about how he was raised. Right. Okay. But she never got into the, into the part about why they're ignoring her or why why his family doesn't like her. Well, there's another situation. See what I mean? That's why I'm bringing this up. Like, how could a whole family not be interested in in the boy's uh, main squeeze? Main squeeze. I, I don't know what to call her. Uh, she didn't say they were engaged. No. You know, they're, they're steady boyfriend and girlfriend. They live together. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, a whole group doesn't like ignore you for no reason at all mm -hmm. or blow you off. I mean, mm -hmm. there, there, there's got to be more to this. Yeah. My instincts tell me. Anyway, is it time for your little lunchy poo? It happens to be time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. And I will join with our uh, uh, voice artist, William H. Morrow III, for our little show. And then um, followed by um, promo, which is done by William H. Morrow, uh, our commercial. And then we will come back with the balance of this show. I forgot to mention that now that video that you saw before this show, that, that, that's our primary uh, inductee this week into the Chisler's Hall of Shame, the Atkins Frozen Dinner. Just wanted to do a quick rehash. It was the uh, the turkey breast dinner with a whopping 830 milligrams of sodium, not salt substitute like Atkins used to promote, new salt, which was potassium, but salt per serving at $5 a pop, uh, only nine ounces of food, and uh, pay that much money you should be getting a safe salt substitute because many overweight people have to struggle with hypertension mm -hmm. and the 830 milligrams will not be good for them mm -hmm. they will be in danger so mm -hmm. what is your take on these frozen dinners that that old man Atkins is not alive to uh, to oversee well in that sense they're just like all the other ones they add salt for flavor Right. Otherwise, the stuff tastes bland. And the portion is small, and the price is high. Well, that's typical, isn't it? Yes. In the American capitalistic system. You know, you can you can you can go through the through the whole line. Lean cuisine, uh, Marie Callender frozen dinners, uh, uh, Swanson. I don't know if it's still Swanson. Hungry Man dinners. You know, you can go on and on, but but this one in particular, they should know better yeah. than to put 830 milligrams of sodium chloride in a health food frozen dinner like the Atkins dinner. So that's all they are, until we come up with more inductees, so far they are the first inductee into the Chislis Hall of Shame. Shame on you, Atkins Food Products. Hey, hey. We'll see you now. When I get back from William H. Morrow, the third and commercial. Okay, we're here with William H. Morrow, the third. Um, 
How are you feeling, sir, today? Extremely tired. Extremely tired. Extremely tired. But, uh, all right, well. I will I, survive. I will survive. What was that Gloria Gaynor? Back in the disco time? I don't know I why will the song, but I don't know who it was. Yeah, disco uh, song. Uh, now, you know, I, 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 I noticed, I was reading an article, and it made me think when kids are in school, grammar school and high school, there are many important things that they are not taught. Oh, oh, oh. And there's a lot of waste in textbooks. I've told people for, well, personally, I think a lot of what is wrong with society, you see bullying and everything else. I've always thought, and nobody does to my knowledge, from first grade on, or maybe even kindergarten, there should be a class or lessons taught in ethics and morality. Start, a, start them off with young, that. young, start learning how to yeah. treat other people and animals a whole bit. They right. don't have anything. It's all math, English, coloring, your right. old coloring and, and then, And then if, if they spot in grammar school, if the teachers spot a possible sociopath with no remorse well, for that's, animals that's, you're and right. people, psychology, they then they can send the kid to the psycho the psycho yeah, office. certain things psychology can office. do. So, uh, but in high no. school, they, they should teach things like how to balance a checkbook, how to do your taxes, how to be responsible, work, that, uh, managing a budget for the house. I was on the news or in the papers just last week, they're saying we're not teaching kids about money and how to, ha how to handle money as they get older. Yeah. So you're right. I mean, uh, but different different things that Investing, would help. Investing, investments. Well, not just, well, first of all, you need you need a steady full-time job with with extra surplus cash in order to invest. Yeah, you put it aside. You know, but but I mean things like how to how to properly read labels in the supermarket, well, how to choose healthy foods, how to prepare healthy foods. What about a, what about a, how to establish your own business? How to obtain capital? Uh, so much they could be teaching in these schools way be before college, and a lot of colleges yeah. don't teach all of this either Listen, in great detail. They have they have workshops with uh, connected to uh, state of New Jersey uh, workforce w workforce at the unemployment office. They have workshops. Why can't they offer these workshops in high school? Well, uh, yeah, and right, you also have school score which is out of the SBA, which is a special core of retired executives that yeah. guide you through and help you if you're starting a business. And then you apply for a government grant or what have right. you. Uh, there's so much you can do, but so much that's not being taught. I think they should really teach these kids how to have a course in entrepreneurship. Yeah. Real life. How to be an entrepreneur. Real life ha knowledge, hands-on knowledge that they could use for the rest of their life. And give them maybe a brief semester or two in what to do if you do develop a new product or whatever and want to start a business about yeah. applying for patents or copyrights or what have you. Well, it's not its you know? not just entrepreneurship. It's even how to manage a household properly. Paying bills, balancing a, a, a checkbook, saving, uh, uh, and that, and that eating, would, eating healthy, cooking healthy, like I said before. Well, the balance of the checkbook and all that would not take long at all anyway. You could eat some of that in a few minutes, basically. Yeah, but you know how many you semester. know how many uh, young adults are literally nincompoops out there? Sure. They don't. They can't even identify a state in the United States. Or in or name most of the state's capitals. Even right. Yeah, Jay Leno did that. He he walked around. He, he walked up to uh, college kids. And they, it was they, the capital of so and so. Well, they were. They, were like, they didn't know. Oh, well. They couldn't even geographically. Yeah. They couldn't even identify states. I yeah. can name some, quite a few, most. Some I'm not sure of. Yeah. Oh, you want me to name it? No. No, 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 no. I mean, no. A hundred percent of the kids he approached did not could not identify the states or or name capitals. Well, a lot of them, sadly, didn't even know the name of the vice president. Yeah, these are college kids. Uh, these are college kids. Yeah, even the name of the vice president is very critical. You know, but there's, there's so many little common sense things that, that these kids should be taught that many adults don't even have the skills for. No. Like I said, how to run a household responsibly, money, managing money. Well, didn't you used to get that quite a bit in high school? My high school, I didn't take it, but it was supposed to be for the women, the girls. It was called home economics, but I think it was primarily cooking. Yes, well, it, you know, so, yeah, uh, yeah. Or yeah, probably like, uh, duh, do not put any metallic alloy in a well, micro, in it, a mic. It, but if it's about cooking, why call it economics, home economics? I have no why idea. Why not cooking 101 or something? You know, like I, like like I just said before, common sense things, I wonder if they do teach. Don't put aluminum foil in a microwave, nothing metallic. Uh, uh, things like sugar and fat 
will explode in a microwave if you have it in too long. Uh, how to, uh, just how to maintain, how to cook properly without, burn, without burning something, how to, how to keep the house clean, how to manage your money. All these things are important. I had a neighbor, Yeah. her older daughter, meaning she was, wasn't a kid, she was in her 20s or 30s, tried to cook pasta, I think it was spaghetti, you know, out of the box or whatever, yeah. on a grill. <laughs> was it rigatoni or was it? It was whatever, hard pasta. Oh my God, Come what on. an idiot. It's got to go into boiling water. <laughs> what a moron. On a grill. When she told me that, I said, are you serious? She goes, she, goes, I, she doesn't have a clue. But it's, com it's common sense. But there was an example of what you just brought up. But it's, it's, just, it's just sheer common sense that you don't put dry pasta on a grill. Well, and she liked common sense, I guess, because she did. Well, you have to really be a moron. Holy mackerel. That's pretty mackerel. bad. That's pretty bad. That is pretty bad. No. And I bet she was an American girl, too. Yeah, well, yeah. Yes. I mean, reading a label. You know, a lot of people, unfortunately, they buy food products that have an advertisement. Never buy food with an advertisement. Because chances are it's corporate owned and it's it's full of toxins and preservatives. It's garbage. Well, it, not, not everybody's a health nut. It does taste good quite a lot. Nine times a that. Lot of it is good. But that doesn't induce a, a, a lifetime of good health eating like oh, that. Oh, but not everybody's out for health. They're not. They just want something that tastes good. But if you read the label, they're not taught that the first ingredient the on primary. that label is the primary yeah. ingredient. A lot of people don't care. That's, well, hey man, it's, it's their it's their life. But it's then again, it's their lifespan. It's by the federal government for not for listing it, and it's not really in there too. So it's buyer beware. Are you really getting what they list? So now they're having more stringent laws that if you do well, lie. Well, you're talking about truth and labeling. Uh huh. Yep. It's 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 one thing to have it on the label or not yeah. have it on yeah, the label. Yeah, that is your primary, and it's not even in there. And the problem is is truth and labeling is another. Th uh, th issue that should be police. I forgot police. one company had some product, I forget what it was, but their primary ingredient, ingredient in the product, it didn't contain any of it. Zero. Zero. Oh, so palm, pa fraud. pomegranate, palm well, by... Palm did have 0.3%, which is <laughs> really, really... It was owned uh, by Coca-Cola, palm, right? I think so. I'm not sure. Yeah, but so it's know, Powerade, so. owned by Coca-Cola, I believe. Well, Coke and Pepsi, they all own a lot of different companies. But, uh, drink well, PepsiCo, drink. at one time, I don't know if they still do, own KFC, Taco Bell, Pizza and, and another Pizza Hut, too, right? Oh. But anyway, it's truth and labeling, and it's also learning how to read a label and uh, make wise choices. If you don't care about your health, well, you should have that choice. At least know how to read a label. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. but then again, that's why you have certain fast food. But Fast foods are slowly changing and offering healthy, more healthy options too to go with their other. Well, like Wendy's does that they now. They do McDonald's Burger King. Well, I don't know about McDonald's. McDonald's is. But they have salads. They has have a healthy, bad reputation. But they have healthy options. Well, you know they have uh, uh, salads and what have oatmeal, which is great. Their oatmeal is great at McDonald's. So. Yeah. Well, you got you got to think about well, what are they flavoring it with? Uh, the McDonald's uh, strawberry milkshake has like over 50 chemicals in it that people are not oh, aware of. The most of them do, but you have to let people know. People have a right to know what's in the food they consume. Well, now, I guess they could look that up on the website. If they, they? If they don't. ingredients, if they wanted, aren't you by law? Don't they do that? If you want to find find out what's in blah blah blah, go to our website. Blah blah blah. We'll show you. Well, it should be there. Yeah. So right. I assume that, it's that's there. not a, that's not it's a bad like that. choice. What I'm saying is it's not. They're hiding it or keeping it a secret, you know, so. But the FDA is a joke, without a doubt. They've made a lot of mistakes over the years. The FDA is a joke and they, uh, they, have, they have a blind eye to certain things and other things, they're on you, on your ass. Like for instance, nutrition companies, uh, they don't go after drug companies because drug companies pay government people off and they, they can afford it. But they sure go after vitamins and minerals and herbs and uh, a little, a little too stringent, stringently. You know? I don't think so. I don't think they do enough for them. I, th I think they should regulate the, the uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, vitamin industries per se. I don't think the government does enough. They're never involved in it. But what I about what, what about drugs? What about pharmaceuticals? Well, they do regulate that. I think they should. 
They I do? Think, yeah. Look at look at all the drugs that have killed people. They got they got yeah. taken off the it's shelf. Like they allow certain things, just like they allow certain amounts of rat or hair or whatever droppings and certain things like hot dogs or whatever. Yeah, I mean, you know, they allow certain things. That's another There's thing. There's a certain amount of arsenic in some foods too. That exactly. They uh, 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 apple juice has arsenic. It was but found to have arsenic. I've always said they should get involved with the, the vitamin industry. They don't do enough. Why that. should why should arsenic? Why should there be any arsenic in apple juice? There shouldn't be any. Maybe because it doesn't do that, man. It's small quantities. But it's the, F quantities. the FDA. They're, they're supposed to look out for the, the health and safety of yeah, America. That's probably why. I've, I haven't known anybody that's died from apple juice. You know, and test. So, you know, test the drug thoroughly before putting it out well, on the do, market. They do. They do all their tests, but I guess they allow so much error. There's a lot of error with drugs. But they should really be going into the vitamin industry too and regulating that. Yeah, but you know how much you know how much proof was brought to Washington about. The medicinal application of vitamins and minerals and herbs, and they totally did not pay attention at the hearing. Gary Knoll brought tons of information to a f well, federal a hearing. Lot of European studies have shown a lot of these claims have been false. They don't really do what the claims have been. Well, Europeans are more advanced. Yeah, and they said no. Than us. They're the ones that come out with all this stuff, like echinacea doesn't do a thing for colds. E doesn't. Vitamin Echinacea? E are you? Uh, I, I beg to differ. I, I've used it. I know yeah, people who've used maybe, it. Maybe again, subliminally, maybe because you wanted to. Echinacea was used by Native Americans uh, as a very yeah, powerful a uh, has been. Uh, immune system stimulator and, and uh, antiviral, antibacterial. Golden, golden seal is another yeah, one. I wonder how much of this stuff really. I would love to see real. These are all European studies. And, uh, I don't know. Well, sounds so good. I'm all, I'm I'm all for natural holistic medicine. But, yeah. but moving on, uh, products that will work. We were talking about many times. We discussed the you ninja. Mean like as seen on TV. As seen on TV, infomercial products that work and those that don't. Now, ninja happens to be one that's incredible fed. product. Incredible. Anything. The company's name is Europro. They make the shark vacuum steamers, the whole bit vacuum cleaners. Really? Uh, that's all Europro. They make great quality product. Oh, the Shark? They make the Shark? They make, that's Europro too. I have the Europro, uh, uh, what do you call it, toaster oven. It is incredible. I think it's built like a rock. Yeah. So. You know, and, and with, you know, this is the, the good thing about R&D labs and, co and allowing competition and, and improving your product. I mean, the Ninja proved that they beat out the Vitamix. Well, who, nobody's going to beat Vitamix and somebody did. Look how many decades Vitamix has been three, four hundred dollars a pop for Still each is. one. But they don't, they, they, their engineers could not figure out, well, let's eliminate the clumping at the bottom adding more blades of, the, of the blender, of the, of the container, by adding more blades, like Ninja yeah. has multi-level blades. Yeah. Blades at the, everything fast. At the bottom, mid-range, and at the top. Plus, it has a very powerful electric motor. Uh, they Two beat. horsepower, 1,500 watts. It's wow. very powerful, more powerful. But this comes from a, a mindset. Of, this, is, this, this represents the right way to run a business. Hey, we can do it better. They didn't create a new product. They made a long existing product better. They reinvented the paper clip, so to speak. Yeah, long term you know, versus short term. we can do it better. Look, look how, how, how cheap when the Hyundais in South Korea first came out. I, 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 Hyundai. I remember the very first Hondas were like little tin cars. I was I I I, I, cans, I took my fist and I and I knocked on the Hyundai dashboard and it felt like cheap. And now they're solid as can be. So it's the Kia. Yeah, it, it, it felt like cheap flimsy you plastic. You get a good administration or president or CEO and they're saying this is going to stop. And you get the right people in there. You can mm -hmm. turn anything yeah. around. Kias, Hyundai. Remember, it used to be in the fifties. Everybody laughs at anything that's set on the back made in Japan. They're no laughing joke. They stand for quality. Yeah. And so do the South Koreans now. Because the leadership decided We're not to, gonna take laugh, to take change laugh their priorities. They changed remember, their priorities. I remember reading one of Kiyo, uh, Kiyo Morita, the founder of Sony, said, this is going to stop. And he turned everything around. The others follow suit. When you do something great, you're pushing your competition to do something. Hopefully as great, maybe greater, not quite, who knows. But it's going to make them all take notice. You yeah. Have to. Well, you have to if you well, want to compete. Well, the attitude trickles down from the the CEO. Yeah, yeah. If the CEO has the right attitude, it goes all the way down the ladder. That's why CEO. Well, there's a lot of CEOs that set a very bad example. And for that's why company. they're released. And they get a power kick off the board of directors yeah. too. They don't last too long. Yeah. You've had some CEOs that didn't even last a year. And these yeah. guys said, "Wait a minute, you're not doing a thing here properly. You're out." 
your 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 product no. can't compete. Your product is 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 uh, is very shoddy. Who made you CEO for what? Or or maybe he's abusive. To, he, he doesn't respect his employees. All different. There's all different things that yeah. are wrong. And then there's others that have been great CEOs. There's um, I'm going to mention it on the on uh, with uh, William H. Morrow the third. I mean, I'm going to mention it with. <laughs> I, I get the bills confused. Uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman. There's a specific uh, CEO of a market in New England that has totally a different attitude from other supermarket CEOs. You're not talking about the... Um, um, it's in two tickets in Tewksbury, Massachusetts. You're not he, talking about... Hi, hi, Crystal. You're not talking about the... Oh, what's his name? Stu Leonard. I think so. Well, the ultimate number one market in the world. It's in New England, right? No. Stu Leonard is, yes. Yes, Stu Leonard, yeah. Number one market. And it's ranked the top business in the world to work for is being built right over here, Wegmans. Wegmans? Really? Right, number one corporation to work for, number one in quality, yeah. size, everything. Well, get, nuts, they are the greatest. Well, getting back to the other gentleman, uh, he pays a, not only a living wage, he gives out bonuses. Stu Leonard is a wonderful worker. And he, he, he gives low-income people the, the lowest prices they can ever find. He's a great... He, so, he, he sounds like a, a really a hell of a nice guy, and also a very smart CEO that yeah, knows that knows how to how to run a company the right way. If you're that good, the money will automatically be there. They're not greedy, but they make big, big money. Look know? at Costco, how great they are. He gives it. Yeah, I mean that's the biggest competitor for uh, Walmart at Little Lamb and Target. Yeah, as a supermarket, I think that they start people off with a bare minimum of. Uh, I think uh, 11, 11 or fifteen dollars an hour. Who does uh, Costco? Do they? Yeah, eleven minimal eleven. I mean, for I'm talking about like a, a cashier or a stock worker or whatever. But they they do give raises, and other people have been known working there to make in the twenties per hour. You know, uh, I mean, I'm not I'm not sure if it's union or non-union in Costco. If if it's if it's non-union, they're probably doing this to keep the unions out, so people won't people will be happy with their job. Benefits give well, the right they benefits. Say if they want to cry union, we want a union. They could also say, okay, go ahead. If you vote union, you get a union. You will be making less. I'm paying you more than the union can get yeah. you. So, so every time, uh, so every time the union tries to get in there, they he probably gives them a raise. It's been done numerous times throughout the business you world. Know, so. But the thing is, you got to be fair to people. You got to listen. Any disputes, like you know, with a union, they go to arbitration and then they listen to both sides. Well, the managers have to listen to both sides and not be quick to fire immediately. Well, that's in any industry. They're horrible. I mean, so yeah, like, yeah, but. Uh, you know, they, too much of management Try, tries to overmanage by cracking the whip. That's all. It's about understanding your people and your customer. Like they were doing at a certain McDonald's that we both know about. They were mean. They were very mean to their employees. You can't. Oh, you can't take a day off in advance for uh, a wedding. Oh, you can't. Oh, you, you have they, children. Uh, you have kids. You can't yeah. take a day off for your kids. You can't do vacation. Yeah, I've heard of other McDonald's that we don't go to. But I talk to people that have worked there, and they rave. They said the guy's a clean freak, which is good. Every day they bleach everything down. He doesn't want any filth or any of his customers getting sick. He's that that Meticu like meticulous, stick, meticulous about cleanliness. Well, bleach would do it. Well, he bleaches down every day, the whole place before they go home. Right, but they take the time to do that. He, he wants it done, so you know. So that's good. So uh, anyway. Um, um, Again, it all comes out from the manager or owner, which in that case would be the well, CEO, I guess, well, or the president, whatever you want to call him. It starts with it starts with having the right. <laughs> the bottom line, he cares. He cares. That's, That's what it. I'm saying. It starts with having the right attitude, and it works its way down the ladder. And this is the problem with American businesses not being competitive because they have the wrong attitude. Oh, wait, I disagree with that. The they, they think are, they are think the they think the world. We just have some bad managers. They think there. short term. We have some bad management, but we no, have no, some you, great corporations. You, you, you have some of the finest, yeah. educa well-educated, and uh, some of the finest uh, engineers in the world, but with the wrong attitude running the company. It could change a lot. That's why they're not putting out a high-quality, competitive product. Uh, a lot of products we make are 
we just don't manufacture a lot anymore. They're made in other countries nowadays. Right. So that's another well, thing too. Well, I remember Steve Jobs said, yeah. for some reason, we fire most PhDs that we hire within a matter of weeks because they don't get along with the other people because they, they are focused on their yeah. book learning and their tunnel vision, but they can't. Well, Steve, jo Steve Jobs is, is a culprit having products made in mainland China. Well, I guess they all are Walmart sweatshops, the whole bit. The sweatshops, uh, uh, Foxconn, there's a company named Foxconn in China. They pay their people a lousy 32 cents an hour. They have to wear, on. listen, they have to wear a diaper. They can't go on breaks. They can't, You're kidding me. I'm not kidding. They live in little cubicle dormitories. That's, that's lower than slave labor. And there's a high suicide rate. They have yeah, to live on camp. Just, you don't do that. Foxconn no. is like is like a city. It, they have their own community. But I bet the big wheels are making big money, aren't they? Oh, because they're not paying yeah. any out. So they no. must be making big money. Yeah, they're very, they're, they're, it's really slavery. It's That's really, not right. That it, it just, just take a sweatshop from the uh, Industrial Revolution of the U.S. and make it a tad bit worse. That's what's going you know, on. I think inmates in prisons working in uh, the license plate shop or the wood shop have it easy. More, make more money than that. And have it easy. Because they're paid that, they're paid too. Yeah. To buy their cigarettes and candy right. or, or whatever they want. And they sure, I'm sure they but eat. they get more than 32 cents. And I'm sure they eat better and they're treated a little better. Yeah. That's, it's, that, it's just not right. Yeah, yeah. I saw I saw the documentary. They're living in little cubicle dormitories, and 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 they they don't even. There's no human rights. They don't care. There's no. They don't care. They don't care about life in the same way. I don't understand this. You know. So so a CEO that is a decent human being. I would look at Foxconn and say, you know what? I. Well, how do you know? My about conscience it? will bother me. How my do you know about it, and others don't. Because the media did not focus too long on this subject. What did you hear about it? I watched it on television. What channel? Was on, I think it was on 60 Minutes one time. Really? Foxconn, yeah. It's horrible. What do they do? What do they make? They make uh, all the cell phones, uh, laptops, uh, they assemble. It's a uh, manufacturing. Oh, they don't make per se, they just put together. They put it together. So a, a lot the of the. Parts are shipped to them and then they assemble it. Right. Like a lot of the smart. Okay. All right. A lot of the tablets, smartphones, and laptops that are, are purchased in the United States are assembled in Foxconn. By the company Foxconn. Why, what did they say about the other companies that are sending their stuff to be assembled there that found out about this? Why aren't they pulling us and we're out of here? You know Unless what? you treat your people better. That's I good, would if I was super tech. That's I'd a say, good we're question. Out of here. Like, we don't well, need well look at the clothing that was made in Bangladesh and they and they had the place yeah. burned down and people yeah. died of, from the fire inside. Was it a hundred some odd people? I don't remember exactly. It was, uh, I think, Old Navy and. Well, was it a hundred some odd people died? And Walmart. Yeah, no, a it was a lot. People. A lot of people perish in that fire, and uh, and, and a big. Plus um, they don't keep them really cool. They have a few fans scattered yeah. about. Well, what Strong. happened was, what happened was, they said if OSHA walked into that plant, it there would be, there would be hazards. It would be shut down. There would be there would be hazards all over the place. Well, they don't have an OSHA equivalent. Over no, there. no, but it was so. It was that bad. And and what happened was it fell on deaf ears. Fire hazard just waiting to happen. They told the corporations, uh, uh, I believe it was Walmart and Old Navy. They told them, they told them that we need to get things fixed, and they didn't care because it was Bangladesh. It's a third world country. They didn't who? Walmart the, and Old Navy. Didn't the care. big the big clothing companies. They don't care about human lives. They don't care. And and guess how much they were getting paid in Bangladesh? Oh, probably big whopping thirty five cents an hour, maybe. 14 cents. 14 cents. An hour. Bangladesh. So th this is the, the man's heart. Man's inhumanity towards man. There you go. This is the heartlessness of yeah. human nature. The uh -huh. evil, the evils of human nature. God, your whole payroll might be $200 a week. I mean, for every employee yeah. total. But is it Think worth having that. all those people die? You in, want to see them die? Don't in you? a fire? Yeah, they don't care. They don't care. We're talking about greed. We're talking about evil greed. Over there, it's as long as I get mine. Yeah. And they don't care. I have mine, and I don't care you don't about like you. It, quit. We'll get somebody else. The CEO of Papa John's was like that. He says, uh, "I don't owe anything. I don't owe anything to my employees if my company improves. I don't owe anything to my employees." You're, you're serious? He said that. He made that statement. Really? Yeah. Well, that's wrong. When was this? He he made a he made a statement a while ago. He he honestly says uh, if my if Papa John's uh, uh, prospers, I don't have to allow it to uh, trickle down to my employees. That's like a quarterback in football saying I don't need an offensive line to protect me. Yeah, getting cocky. Yeah, saying, I mean, yeah. I, you know they're nothing without me. 
Yeah. You're nothing without your people. Remember that. So this, so people get cocky. This is all about attitude. Why do you think I say I use the word sociopath? Sociopath has no remorse, no compassion, no, no empathy. No feeling. It doesn't matter. That you can do something wrong. Like when G.W. Bush was a kid, he used to blow up frogs with fireworks and laugh. Which was that the father or the son? The son. He used to blow. The, uh, he used yes. to blow up frogs. Now that's a sociopath. Cause yeah. You know why? He feels no remorse. I couldn't do that. No, I, are you kidding me? I, I could never hurt an animal. Except a mosquito trying to suck blood out of me. I would whack a mosquito. Because I don't want to I don't want to scratch all night long with a big oh, mosquito bite. That, I think ants are useless. You know how I feel about ants, like, you know. You mean uh, uh, ants, aunts, well, there's uh, always, and uncles? Or, you see or, one, there's never just one. No. There's a whole swarm, a horde. I, you see one, there are thousands or millions more. I'm going to tell you. I cannot stand ants. I'm sorry. But, uh, before, we, uh, no. before we sign off, I want to tell you a funny ant story. There's an office in Central America, and they, they deliberately. They deliberately. You uh, ah, so somebody we know just left. Yes, she did. You want to be interviewed? For you two? <laughs> ah, come on, though. come on. Uh, so, so many people are, are so. Uh, I'll go ahead with your story. The they become nervous wrecks when they see a camera. Now, uh, this, I, this, this office in, San, uh, in yeah. Central America, Central America, deliberately leaves the doors open when they close because the uh, soldier ants. They come in and go right out. But, they, and the swarm comes in, they clean out the and office. A path. And the, every little crumb, and then yeah. they leave. And they don't disturb anything else. And they don't disturb anything yeah. else. Now, when a soldier, when you see a soldier they have ant, little come, helmets. Yeah, I know. They do a goose step it's when like they walk. Like a carpenter ants with tool belts. <laughs> okay, what's going to be like, next? They look like Bob Vila. You know, why do I like praying mantises? They always carry those little Bibles. Okay. Well, yeah, and they have a little uh, collar like a priest on their neck. But well, the only the Catholic mantises. <laughs> Catholic mantises. <laughs> but the point is. Well, you don't get in their way. When you see soldier ants coming, you take off. Because they'll bite you and eat you, too. They'll, they'll eat you if you're in their way. But, all right, so... I've seen owners in their homes down in some of these places. Just stand there and watch them. And then they go right back out and they say, that we're done. Okay, I'm going to give a little tip to people that have pestilence. How to kill bugs with, uh, non-toxically, without to toxicity. You get what they call diatomaceous earth, diatom powder. Okay, uh, and you, you sprinkle it, you put it on newspaper or whatever, wax paper, you sprinkle it with powdered sugar, and any insect that walks through it will die of desiccation. They will be. Well, there's nothing like defecation to kill one. No, desiccation, they dry out. Dry out. Not defecation. Not Have a nice evening, ma'am. Thank you. All right, thank you, William H. Morrill III. Yes. It's been a pleasure as always. Let's take a breather and have a cigarette. Oh, bye bye everybody. Take care. Smoke time. Are you gonna you telling the public you smoke? Oh hell yes, you bet. <laughs> I don't deny that. You get a corn cob pipe. I have one. Or what about a Hugh Hefner pipe, one of those long ones? Nah, I like a right cigarette. Okay, Sir Walter Rowley. Bye bye. Bye bye everybody. Take care. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living in the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we are back. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III, for a very in invigorating show. Okay, and uh, for, for, for you viewers out there with entertainment industry connections, uh, William H. Morrow is available uh, for uh, employment for his uh, wonderful uh, voice artist uh, talents. Um, and, he, and of course he did a very great promo. That's how you join us or our organization. That's the best way. Get your free annual subscription.
to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work at newslettercensored.com. And the brand new issue is out. That isn't that so, Dr. Bill? Yes, it is. It's out. All right. Now, let us sink our teeth back into these readings. Oh, before I begin, mm. before we begin, uh, from what I understand, Hillary Clinton is still supporting and promoting a Monsanto's GMOs, which is a very bad decision on her part. She's, so she's supposed to be a Democrat? She's, ah. she's supposed to feel your pain more than a Republican? Well, you're not feeling the pain of mainstream by allowing the toxic uh, Monsanto GMO foods to be sold in American markets. So, not a good move, Hillary. Not a good move. I would lose that that attitude with Monsanto. Because people are not liking it. Remember, there is no trickle-down economics. Don't listen to what the teabaggers have to say. Never worked. It was never meant to work. We only have siphoned up to the top 20% economics. Siphon up to the fat cat economics, the devil's economics. There is no trickle down economics. Gotcha? This is a siphon. Gotcha. Siphon up economics. That's all I have to say. It's all yours. Boeing Company a CEO Jim McNearney apologized on Friday for saying the aerospace giants employees were cowering during his tenure. Coward. A comment one union official called a new low. Well, doesn't surprise me coming from any president, any corporate individual, CEO. McNearly, McNearney made the remark during a Wednesday call with analysts when he was asked if he is thinking about retiring after he turns 65 next month. McNearney said he won't because the heart will still be beating. And the greed will still continue. And the employees will still be coward. Yeah, this guy needs this guy needs some bitch slapping. In an apology sent company wide, McNearney said the comment was a joke gone bad. Isn't that what the, the CEO of Nestle said that he didn't mean? that statement about controlling about that people have no right to drinking water yeah. and then when he gets caught he goes oh I was only kidding yeah. Republicans do that all the time oh well, I was only kidding they, they do not love it but their truth comes out in jest even you know well what if they're serious when they say it that's they're, what I'm saying they are they're not known to be stand-up comics Republicans they are, they are <laughs> serious when they say it but when they get caught, just like Mitt Romney with the 47%. Humana, humana, humana. You know? Then they backtrack. Then they bring in the PR firm, et cetera, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Well, Mick, Mitt Romney got caught. He was on, he was on, he was recorded. Sarah Palin was recorded when she got all excited about hunting baby uh, fur seals with the supposed... Uh, and wolves from the helicopter. With the supposed... Uh, 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 president of France. Wolves. Yeah, who she thought called him, called yeah. her on him. It was it was a <laughs> it was talk a it was prank. a comedy talk show. It was a yeah. prank from uh, in from Canada. <laughs> Why she wanted to hunt? She wanted to hunt hunt timber wolves from helicopter. helicopter. Yeah, shoot at wolves. Yeah. yeah. Hey, the woman can dress a a a a a a, 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 a moose out in the field. You know, you gotta respect oh, that. I bet she, I bet she just loves cutting into an animal and oh, yeah. cleaning it out, gutting it. You know, if you do that often enough, practice makes perfect. 
That doesn't mean you're intelligent. That doesn't mean you can lead a state, a country. Well, we already know that she can't do that. I mean, she's proved that over the years. She's an imbecile. Yeah. Numsco. How many colleges has she uh, jumped out of or whatever? Sounds like she's been through college many times, through the front door and out the back. It's like she... Sarah, Sarah Bubbleheaded, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Michelle Bubbleheaded Bachman. Bachman Turner Overdrive. All right, go ahead, I'm sorry. The CIA's insistence that it did not spy on its Senate overseers <laughs> collapsed on Thursday with the release of a stark report by the agency's internal watchdog documenting improper computer surveillance and obstructionist behavior by CIA officers. Well, I honestly, okay, it's not nice to have anyone spy on you, uh, invading your privacy, any human being, but you know what? In a way, I'm glad that congressmen and senators are being uh, surveillanced, are being watched. Yeah, but for what reason? Certainly not a reason that uh, 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 helps the public. But who's behind it? It's not a, it's not a reason to help mainstream no. America? How does it help the public? You know, what people don't really get yeah. about the government and its programs, they are all supposed to be working together. We have the House against the Senate. We got the Senate against the House. We got the House against the President. We got the, uh, 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 the, the Supreme Court against the, uh, everybody. No teamwork. We got the CIA working against government, etc. And the other spy, or NSA, and etc. Nobody's working together. You, you can forget about that bullshit uh, compromise. Yeah, but that's how things get done. Bipartisanship. Let's see in this country. That's the government that was set up by the founders. Well, the right way to get things done is to, is to vote in the, the right people and have the right people outvote the bad people that got elected. But That's the right way to do it. When parties came into existence... Not the compromise. Huh? When parties came into existence in this country, you can wave goodbye to that. Because huh? then the parties protect the parties and they don't give a damn about the general welfare of the country. So it was a form of dictatorship. Yeah. It was a form of totalitarianism. Or a form of obstructionism. So how, how old do you think the plutocracy, the oligarch, has been around? It was oligarchs who wrote the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. Oh, the guys with the wigs on? That's correct. They were the oligarchs. Slave owners. Yeah, yeah. George but, Washington, all of them were oligarchs. And they glorified those guys, uh, the, especially the teabaggers, glorified the founding fathers. Well, the history, the bullshit history books I had when I was in school glorified them. <laughs> the lying history books. Five agency employees, two lawyers, and three computer specialists yeah. improperly accessed Senate Intelligence Committee computers earlier this year in a dispute over interrogation documents. According to a summary of the CIA Inspector General report describing the results of an internal investigation. Then Despite CIA Director John Brennan's ordering a halt to that operation, this is a bunch of bullshit, okay? That's not what happened. Mm -hmm. The CIA itself ordered the spying, not just five people, three computer guys what, and two what does the head of the CIA, the, what, the, what does the head of the CIA have to gain by keeping a watchdog eye on everybody in what Washington. What did J. Ever, Edgar Hoover have to gain by doing the same thing? He's an arrogant, power-hungry fuck. Correct. 
who like to dress as a woman. Right, even though he's looking for pinkos everywhere. Yeah, that's correct. Throughout the country, yeah. It's correct. He was dressing as a woman as he was looking for commies. The CIA's Office of Security began an unauthorized investigation that led it to review the emails of Senate staffers and search them for keywords. After Senate leaders learned about the intrusion in January and objected, the CIA made a criminal referral to the Justice Department, alleging improper behavior by Senate staffers when they took the internal CIA review documents. That referral, CIA watchdog David Buckley found, was based on inaccurate information and was not justified. Mm -hmm. Brennan also asked his agency's inspector general to examine whether the CIA committed wrongdoing. The CIA commits wrongdoing all the time! When internal investigators interviewed the three CIA computer specialists who helped access the Senate machines, they exhibited a lack of candor. The Inspector General's report said, suggesting an attempt to cover up their actions. What else is enough? Those internal conclusions prompted Brennan to abandon months of defiance and defense of the agency and apologize to Senate Intelligence Committee leaders. The director said that wherever the investigation led, he would accept the findings and own up to them. Brennan has convened an internal accountability board presided over by Senator Evan Bayh, Democrat of Indiana, to examine whether any CIA officers should be disciplined. Well, I can guarantee you that they won't. Okay? Should be and, and, and what is, is two different things. <laughs> Any any balloon boy articles today? Unfortunately, not really. He is right now involved in trying to either lower or higher bail for criminals, and of course, he's robbed from the pension fund again to put into the deficit. So that seems to be. I, and also, he said that uh, there was a uh, uh, a, a woman in his. Uh, his uh, organization that uh, sent him an email about the George Washington Bridge thingy. He says he never recollected it or has it, uh, etc. You know, and I, and I suppose he lost it. And I suppose concerning the New Jersey deficit, taxing the rich never crossed his mind. Uh, no, he stole from the pension fund. From the little guy. That's how they do it. From the little guy. Yes. That's how they do it. There's nothing new here. And move on, everybody. There's nothing new here. This is how Republicans act. Okay? Well, I just want to uh, send my greetings to uh, uh, the uh, director of the uh, Patterson, New Jersey Historic Museum, which is right next to America's newest national park, the Great Falls, Mr. Giacomo Di Stefano. And I would like to also uh, send my uh, greetings uh, to uh, Paul Wolkowinski, who is currently on the Indian Club World Tour 2014. He is in Varanasi, India right now and will be leaving for Iran on Ooh. Thursday. And uh, of course, saluting my good friend, uh, master trainer, uh, Mr. Rick Brown, okay. Uh, from Southern California and I would like to thank Mr. Christian Doris of RevolutionClubs.net RevolutionClubs.net for uh, sending me my uh, two pairs of 
Victorian style teardrop Indian clubs which happened to arrive coincidentally by accident on my birthday yesterday. Thank you very much Mr. Christian Dars and of course I would like to say hello to my very close near dear friend in Osaka Japan Miho. Continue. Ocala, Florida. A Florida man Florida Maine is under arrest after authorities say he hit a postal carrier and threw furniture at his truck because he didn't have any mail for the man. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you get a, one or two art, uh, items. Sometimes it's all junk mail. Sometimes it's nothing. So you got to hit the postman and yeah. throw furniture at his truck? Maybe this guy doesn't have a life. If, you, if, you're, if you're dependent on your mail, on your daily mail delivery for your entertainment, man, this, this guy must be really bored with his life. Well, why the hell a, a publisher's clearinghouse sends a god dang thing every freaking day? Hey, listen. When my mother used to get tons <sighs> of soliciting mail she would get pissed now that she doesn't now that she doesn't send anybody any money anymore and she's not getting them she only gets like a couple or a few items in the mailbox now she's complaining uh -huh. <laughs> oh boy too much too little <laughs> oh god ocala police department sergeant angie scroble Scroll balls? What? 27 year old Aaron Bernard Smith faces charges of burglary, battery, and criminal mischief. Now, where did the burglar come in? They didn't say nothing about that. Now, if you threw a pancake batter at somebody, would that be considered battery? No. That would be battery. Battery? Battery. battery. Oh, it's spelled different? No, it's spelled the same way. It's just uh, emphasized differently. Bat battery and battery. 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 Yeah. The postman said Smith struck him with an open fist at least three times. Open fist. On Monday and later threw a broken chair at the truck. Oh, like to do in professional wrestling. Oh. It's like bada bing. It's like this way. Well, that's a slap. An open fist? You can, you can hurt your fingers. I'm sure you can. Yeah. Open fist. I'm sure you can. Oh, well, the guy must be very bored to do that. <laughs> or off his meds. Or on his meds. Well, if he was off his meds, he was pretty much sounding like this. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Lock oh. the door. Katie, bar the door. All right. Uh, uh. America's consumption of alcohol is low compared with that of other countries. But certain United States states still seem quite parched. No state <sighs> handles its alcohol quite like New Hampshire. According to per capita consumption data shared by the Beer Institute, the New England state guzzles more per person 40.8 gallons per year than any other state according to the Beer Institute's estimates. Next in line are North Dakota, Montana, Nevada, and New Hampshire's sister state, Vermont. Sister state? 
Yeah, Maybe sister Michigan. state. I wish New Hampshire uh, did everything positive like Vermont does. If you want to be a sister state. Hmm. New Hampshire's distinction could be partly the result of a cross-border sale. There is no sales tax there. And the state's alcohol commission believes that as much as half of its alcohol sales are to residents of neighboring states. But the per capita estimates are meant to account at least in part for that quirk, meaning that while the nearly 41 gallon number might be somewhat inflated, it's unlikely off by the five gallons of alcohol that separate from New Hampshire from the second biggest guzzler, North Dakota. Yeah, they have a lot of time on their hands up there. They're working the oil up there. North Dakota's rich in oil. Oh, it is? Right now. Drill, drill, drill? Yeah. You betcha. Drill, drill, drill. Darn right. Well, if we had an award for the best all-around states in the U.S., I would pick the state of Washington and Vermont. As far as all-around, you know, uh, governmental-wise. Not weather, but governmental you know, uh, what, more bang for the buck. You know. Of all the states, Utah is by far the least enamored of alcohol. It was the Mormons. Throwing back just 14 gallons per person per year. That's it? I think Mitt Romney drinks that all. So they bang, so they bang all those uh, extra girls and my, and young girls and everything when they're sober. The Mormons. Next in line are New York and Kentucky. You mean as the biggest drinkers? Well, I believe New York because of all the, all the bars and pubs and restaurants and the population. New York consumes 21 gallons. Oh, New York State. Oh, okay. Per person. Okay, I hear you. And Kentucky, 19.5 gallons. Well, Kentucky is the land of bourbon, yeah. otherwise known as bourbon. Corn whiskey. And Tennessee has that Jack Daniels sour mash. On a booze by booze level, however, the story is a bit different. When it comes to beer, no state holds a candle to Stop. North Dakota. I was going to say Wisconsin, Milwaukee. North Dakota? Again? By the Beer Institute's estimates, North Dakotans drink about more than a pint per day. Well, then I, I, I suggest anybody who wants to start a microbrewery do it in North Dakota. North Dakota is number one on hard, in hard liquor and beer. So North Dakota is the overall biggest guzzling, booze guzzling state in the nation. No, New Hampshire is. Oh, New Hampshire is number one in hard, in hard liquor, right? New Hampshire. Beer, it's North Dakota. Probably wine is California. Uh, I would think so. The most of any state in the country. That's North Dakota. New Hampshire is second at 0 0.96 pints a day. Montana is third at 90. Point, point 90. Yeah. Well, Montana is not very populated. And South Dakota is fourth at 0.86. The least beer crazed states are Utah, Connecticut, New Jersey, and New York. In that order. Really? Well, we, uh, the people of the Northeast, we, we like uh, craft beer, micro-brew craft beer. We, we go for beer for its flavor, whereas uh, all the red redneck states, 
they like to guzzle it for the buzz. So they'll they'll drink your cheap ass Coors and Budweiser. Moonshine. Budweiser. No, 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 no. I will. What? I will not make fun of moonshine. Huh? It tastes better than any whiskey I ever had in my life. Oh boy. Oh yeah. I, I had this moonshine that's sold in liquor stores called Midnight Moon Moonshine, and it's flavored. You can get it in different fruit flavors, and it is damn good. So I will not make fun of moonshine. If, if it's done properly. That's right. That should please all you moonshiners out there. <laughs> I'm giving you a salute. With my lucky Blackthorn Irish Shillelagh. I'm a 21 year old man. Well, not you per se. You know. Who has been a successful swimmer in high school, now in college. Mm -hmm. Over the past few months, I have become obsessed with developing six-pack abs. A lot, a lot of young men are because they, they all, when they see models, uh, they all, they're all scrawny guys with six-pack abs. They, they look for abs. Abs are, abs are in, <clears throat> abs are in uh, nowadays. I have never had much success with women. It's not just the abs. It's and I thought that looking like a movie star might finally get me noticed. Make me feel good about myself. It's a very, very complex subject. Attracting women is not a, 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 an exact science. As a result, I have become obsessive about my diet. I have dropped 10 pounds, mostly muscle. No, that's not good. He's losing muscle mass? His Ew. diet is wrong. Oh, he, he, he... Huh? And my performance in the pool has suffered. No kidding. His protein is... is, is, is he's protein deprived. If you want to see your abs, you got to lose fat. You got to cut, cut the carbs and sugar out of your life. Not the, Definitely not the protein. You got to get that protein up. It's the carbs and the sugar that you got to drop to see those six-pack of abs and lose body fat. You got to go Atkins, ketogenic. You know that's the way to do it. Uh, do it for you, for your own self-esteem. Don't do it to impress others. Do it because you you feel good. It makes you feel better. It makes you perform better. You like what you see in the mirror. How your clothes fit. Don't do it for girls. If I don't see perfect definition between every ab and don't exercise for at least two and a half hours a day, I feel fat and guilty whenever I eat. He's, 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 he's going about it wrong. It's, it's, it's in the diet. You want definition? It's in the diet. Don't kill yourself in the gym. If you eat properly, you will see the six pack. I have awakened in the middle of the night, worrying about what I'll eat the next day. Oh God! He should have a he should have a preset menu. He should know what he's eating. I'm concerned for the future, when my metabolism will inevitably slow down. Because he's depriving himself. His body thinks it's starving. I have begun to think that death is a better scenario than being fat. It's my answer. I want, right. I want to be able to enjoy eating again and get my life back. My life back. I don't want to tell my parents or friends for fear of seeming weak-minded. Where can I go for help? Dr. Phil. You better go see Dr. Phil and polish his bald head if you don't have the money to pay the fee. Asking, dear Abby. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I just, I just couldn't help myself. Abby's answer. Physical perfection is no guarantee that you'll find love. <sighs> hey, she's right. It's complicated. Liking yourself and accepting yourself for who you are is what attracts others. 
although looking like a movie star can be an asset, depending on who the movie star is, unless you are secure about who you are and what you have to offer, you can't maintain a healthy relationship. If you don't believe me, look at the tabloids and start counting how many movie star romances resemble a game of musical chairs. Kardashian. If you truly think that death might be preferable to being fat, then you are in trouble. Oh, it goes deeper. It goes deeper than what this guy is saying. If he prefers, if he prefers suicide to, to being overweight. You may have a serious eating disorder. He's not going about it properly. One that could shorten your life. Most people who have an eating disorder need professional help to overcome it. So the place to go is to your student health center. Ask to speak with a mental health counselor about what you're doing and how you're feeling. Oh, okay. Smart, smart idea. It is important that you understand what has caused this so you can be successfully treated. Well, you know, eating properly is, even if you don't, if you, if you don't have the money to hire a, uh, a, nutri a nutritionist and a personal trainer, use common sense. Well, what if you don't have common sense like a Republican? Most people know what to refrain from when it comes to diet. You know, I mean, in general, in general, you know, you just, you, you never lower your protein. You always increase it when you're trying to uh, maintain or build muscle and lose body fat. And you have to cut out the refined carbs, no white sugar and no white flour. You know, you have to do that. I mean, there are, there are, there are supplements you can take. You, you have know. to eat a Bialy instead of a... Uh, 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 What's the Jewish uh, bagel? Bagel. No, no, you can no, the no. Bagel has three times the calories for God's sake. Brony, eat a whole grain. Eat whole grain bread. Don't eat a bite oh, bialy. I'm just using the example. In other words, lesser. I would not eat no stinking bialy or no stinking. Uh, lesser bagel. of the two evil. No, don't get me wrong. A bialy is is, is an, a flat onion roll. It's very tasty, but not the garlic is in there. But not for somebody who has excess body fat. No, why would you eat dough? No, you, what you need yeah. is, is high fiber, very complex carbs, vegetables, salads, you know. And protein. No fried foods. Protein. 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 Yeah, anyway, what do we got? How are we doing on time? Uh, you want to cut or you want to read this guy here? It's uh, kind of a uh, biggie. You mean a big article? About passing stress to each other. You know what? Let's let's do that one last one. As a tax preparer, Stephen Yu deals with clients who can't find records or panic because they haven't filed returns in years. It's their own fault. Unfortunately, Yu picks up on their stress and sometimes takes it home. He becomes irritable, distracted, and can't sleep. My family gets stressed, too, because they're worried about me. If we were talking about symptoms of a fast-spreading virus, officials with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention might be dispatching scientists in biohazard suits. Yeah, like Ebola, which I'm surprised we haven't come across a reading about that. Next week. There are two Americans that have been flown back here. Wonderful. They are in America. They're in quarantine. Quarantine. Guess what? What the doctor said on the uh, on the news, they weren't 100 percent right. It is airborne. It can be airborne. I read an article. Oh, uh, because that's what they say. No, only the body fluids. Yeah, like like this HIV. No, it it, it is possible for it to be aerosol. Hey! Be airborne. I'm telling you, man. Worldwide pandemic. The end times. 
But anyway, continue with this. But uh, um, that's the pale horse, you know. The the pale horse. I thought that was the false ch false church it's and the, the false white village. horse. That's the white horse. The pale, the pale horse. horse is pestilence, pestilence, and this this stuff. And famine disease. and pandemics, disease, and famine, which is which the drought is bringing is, is contributing. Locusts are appearing even in the United States. Swarms of locusts, but uh, yeah, stress. Uh, you know, I wonder how a psychologist feels when they come home after hearing stress. people's problems nonstop. Instead. The culprit is stress. It has been identified as one of the major scourges of our times. Sure. 78% of American adults said their stress levels increased or stayed the same over a period of five years. According to a 2013 report by the American Psychological Association, and more than 30% said stress had made a significant impact on their physical and mental health. Consequences of chronic, untreated stress range from decreased immune system function to insomnia to increased risk of heart disease. To get to the bottom of why we're all so stressed, some researchers have focused on how anxiety can be so contagious as any airborne pathogen. No. Researchers also compared it to secondhand smoke as they considered how regular exposure to challenging people hurts us physically and emotionally. Well, uh, negative toxic people cause uh, undue stress. Uh, Having a demanding scumbag for an employer causes undue stress. Having a, a spouse that's always complaining and and putting you down, or significant other, will cause that too. Philosophers and psychologists have long pondered the ways people, wittingly or not, influence others' emotions. Their curiosity makes sense, considering that humans are fundamentally social creatures. In trying to document the extent to which we are susceptible to emotional contagion, researchers are using sophisticated methods to locate exactly where stress develops in the body. While we may think of stress as purely emotional, doctors know it churns up a complex physiological reactions that involve the nervous endocrine and immune systems. In an experiment at St. Louis University, 20 students watched others struggle to present speeches, <coughs> excuse me, or perform arithmetic problems. The researchers then measured the levels of cortisol and a stress-related salivary enzyme in both the speakers and the student observers. The team found that the observers' stress responses were proportional to the speakers' responses. Tony Buchanan associate professor of psychology at St. Louis University said he was surprised by the level at which witnesses were unsettled by the speaker's discomfort. It was also surprising how easily the stress was transmitted. Oh, yeah. Another 2014 study by researchers at New York University and the University of California, San Francisco, found that babies immediately reacted to the stress of mothers. Don't two people laughing hysterically, telling jokes in a in a restaurant? Don't don't they sort of get others in a good mood? I mean, uh, no. The others say, "Get a room." No, I don't mean. No, I don't mean making out. 
Well, being happy is like making happy. In other words, too it, many people. It annoys some people. That's correct. Oh, okay. Uh, the mothers <coughs> had just participated in an exercise designed to make them anxious. While babies played with caregivers in one room, the mothers gave an impromptu speech to a panel of people. A third of the 69 mothers in the study faced panelists who responded with scowls. After the mothers returned to their babies, the heart rates of mothers and babies were measured. The increased heart rates of the agitated moms were mirrored in their babies. Even if the moms tried to mask their distress with smiles and soothing voices, said Sarah Waters, a postdoctoral fellow at UCSF. But it doesn't take being in the same room with someone, you know, to be brought down by someone else's negativity. As Facebook found, with its controversial experiment on how emotional contagion spreads via social networks. Oh yeah, they, people get riled up every day at Facebook. For one week, the site programmed an algorithm to automatically omit content that contains words associated with either positive or negative emotions from the central news feeds of nearly 700,000 users. The study showed that reducing positive content in users' news feeds reduced the positive content users in turn posted. As alarming as it can be to learn that we are so easily ruffled by others, secondhand stress is not always a bad thing. In fact, it can often confer benefits to individuals and societies. One point of the St. Louis study was to demonstrate people's capacity for empathy. The observers may have felt discomfort, but that emotional state can inspire altruism. Not if they're Republicans. In natural disasters, terrorist events, a lot of people will be running toward the victims to help them. That's the situation where everyone is under stress. But a significant group of people are drawn to help others. Because we are wired to be sensitive to other people. Not in certain cities. Secondhand stress allows us to be connected to other people for good and for bad. Okay, that's it about stress. Definitely a killer, without a doubt. I have a feeling that those people uh, in certain parts of the world that, that live over a hundred years old yeah. in general, like the, uh, uh, the Indian tribe in Ecuador, um, what do they call them, the centenarians? centenarians? People that live over a hundred. I bet their stress is at a bare minimal. Or they know how to cope with it. You think their stresses are, well, they're obviously their stresses are different from okay. someone living in civilization near yes. a big city. And many it? stresses can't be avoided. They have to be cooped. Yeah, like uh, being an American today, very unavoidable stresses caused by our so-called leaders that, you know, when, they're, when they are working several days a month, they're, they're, supposed they're, to be do, servants. they're doing damage to the American people. They're supposed the to be servants, not leaders. Servants? The presidents. Explain that to them. The Senate. Yeah. The House members and the Supreme Court are servants. Public servants, yeah. That's correct. Well, somebody Public better, servants. somebody should remind them. <laughs> they certainly don't even know that or feel that way. They don't care. Okay. 
They don't care. It's it's me. They got me, elected me. and they will do what they want. I have mine and I don't care what you have or don't have. That's basically what it is. Greed, love of money, it's idolatry, the love of money, it's their God, and they have to deal with their maker in due time. Anyway, thank you for joining us for this week's Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. We'll see you next time. Summer is rapidly coming to a close. Well, the unofficial. No, I don't even think it's to the middle yet. I is think it? No, the uh, the unofficial ending of summer is Labor when Day. When did it begin? Is June? Labor Day weekend? June, be, right? June 21st. But yeah. I'm talking about uh, the dog days, like the hottest time of the year. Is now. Is like the the middle to the end of July and the beginning of August. Right, right now it's the beginning of August, but when you reach mid-August to the end of August, the weather starts to change. September. Yeah. The retail stores already have Halloween merchandise, you know. Oh, come on. No, I'm serious. It gets, gets earlier and earlier every year. Unbelievable. This has been a Megalife 21 production.